I'm Peter Boyle from The Morning Show, 710 KNUS, and welcome to the first time we do it, calling it the shoot. This is brought to you, of course, by Cenogenics. Dr. McCallum is my doctor and lover to death, and thanks for doing this one. But over here and on my right, as he always is, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, there is no man I love more. Uh, we've been through so much together. This is our 99th or 250th <laughs> television show, let alone radio shows and hangouts and family stuff. The man, Tommy Tancredo. And never been thrown in jail as a result. On the other Isn't hand. Isn't amazing? <laughs> I, you, I mean, this is what I've always wanted to do because we're able to talk about what we talk about before we do radio together. And we're talking about, so who did you call a communist that you got sued? <laughs> Gary, Gary Tesler. Gary he, he's Tesler. Going to, he said he was going to sue ah. us, yeah. Yeah, I used to do a lot of radio because, especially even over on the Death Star, you yes. know, or the KOA, uh -huh. I guess, yeah. And, um, and Gary Tesler was uh, was one of the hosts, and he was the, he was the resident liberal. Oh yeah, Rosen and, took him out. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Boom. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And so um, one day, at, do, oh here I was on another radio show with uh, a guy by the name of Arnie Buron, <laughs> who always led me into a lot of trouble. I don't know why I keep meeting these people like this, but um, and and he said something about well, who do you think? Do you think in, in, in Denver radio there really are any communists? And I said, oh, yeah, Gary Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, bada boom. Uh, bada bing. Yeah, he was going to sue and everything. I, don't, I can't remember. It, it got resolved somehow. I mean, how many times, by the way, everybody knows Tommy, congressman, media personality, wonderful friend, love him to death. How many times have you been sued? Uh, I haven't, actually. You've never been sued? No, I've never been sued. Give me a couple of minutes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You've never been sued? No. How is that humanly possible? I know. Uh, well, Cause we I work close. at it as we hard as close. I can. We came close. We absolutely have come close in the past. And I assume, well, um, you know, I was on uh, the the um, build the wall thing with uh, oh, yeah, sure. it, w with Steve Bannon, and, and he got thrown he in, got, jail, yeah, he got put in jail, three or four others on the, on the board. I was on the advisory board, and... Um, you were always the guy that left the cigarette burning in the ashtray, <laughs> changed on the bar, and went and got in the car and went home before I was the fight the, started. On the advisory yeah. board, the only thing is, nobody ever asked for our advice. In fact, we never met. <laughs> <laughs> the board, this advisory board, never met. And so I, they couldn't do too much to me about that, but they tried. You remember, as we do, um, when we had done the Romer story. And I oh, think, oh, yeah, that one, oh, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Roberts was on a radio show as we taped this, and we're talking about the Roy Romer story that Westward did. But you, on the other hand, you were doing, you were, you were, you were at the, you were on KOA then, right? I was, that's exactly right. I was, in that point, filling in for Mike Rosen. <laughs> this is when Larson came in, right? That's when Larson came in, yeah, because I had, um, <laughs> I had talked to um, Robert, or uh, let's see, uh, the, the, he was a, the editorial writer for the Rocky Mountain News, pretty good guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and one. he said to me, uh, did you, you know, that about, uh, you know, the fact that, there are pictures of uh, Romer and kissing BJ, in yeah, yeah, kissing sure. in the parking yeah. lot. I said, no, I really did. And this is all right during the time when when um, Clinton was involved oh, yeah, with sure. all the you know well, you, the were, womanizing. Were you in Congress then as well? Or no, no, no. Right? I think okay. I was with the Independence Institute okay. at the time, and so uh, I got asked to take over for Mike Rosen. So I went in and um, and I thought, man, I've got a really good story, you know, and and so I started to tell it, and. I look up and <laughs> Mr. Larson is running in and standing at the other side of the thing going, God, God, yeah. and we had just come back from a break. And I said, we got to go to a break. OK, another break. <laughs> another break right now. And we go to a break and he goes, where did you get this? Where did you get this? And I told him, I said, you know, it was from the Rocky Mountain News uh, writer. And he said, OK, but you got to call Romer's office right now and ask him to yeah. if he wants to sign. Great. Yeah. Hey, cool. Yeah. Called, of course, never didn't want to do anything, but I kept on. Oh yeah, we got pictures of it. Ba ba da ba da ba da ba, and then and then the next day, and it was supposed to come out the next day in in uh, there the, was a the magazine magazine yeah, of, of the Washington it. Times. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> so <clears throat> so um, I'm get I get up. Uh, it's about I, I don't know. I was so scared because I thought, oh my God, what if it doesn't? And I said all these things. And, and uh, so I'm listening to you. We had it, yeah. And, and on the, I'm, I'm taking a shower. I got you on the radio and listening to you. And you go, 
there's these pictures on them. And I said, <laughs> I ran out of Jackie. Jackie, I said, we don't have to move. It's, you, we can stay. You know what that reminds me of is that moment in Goodfellas when, when the guy's in the shower and he hears they knocked off Lutanza. Oh. That was you. You're going like, we're free. We're, we're free. Not, we're oh, my God. Go. It was so good to hear that. Yeah. And then all the pictures came out oh, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That was a great time. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. How many, I'm, I'm like, and I'm really amazed. How many times you sweat rocks? I mean, we've all done Oh, that. my God. Yeah. I, that I can't even begin to tell you, but plenty, plenty. Because, you know, it's true. Uh, I know that the reason why I was always, I was on lots and lots of radio shows <laughs> is because I'm up. like the guy, like that little kid, you know, with Life Meg, or with Life uh, uh, Cereal who goes, uh, Hey, get Mikey. Mikey. He'll eat it. He'll eat anything. Well, he's, get Tom. He will say anything. No, it wasn't so much that. I mean, it, it, I, I loved you so much because we were kindred spirits, but I think we had similar backgrounds. You know, we have, you know, working class and, you know, it wasn't always easy for you. And, um, and we related and you were always so good to me. And, you know, we, we always had fun. We started doing the first radio show I think we did was out on Morrison Road when I yep. first met you. And yep. you were... Were you ready I was to in the, at the time? I, no, I think I was in the state legislature. Okay, all right. Yeah, all right. It was, in, it was like that period between 1976 and 81. Yeah. I can't yeah. remember exactly, but that was it because I came you in. that studio? Oh, gosh, yes. I, that, you had an old wooden door yeah. that <laughs> had one of those spring <laughs> thing that you... No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sure, like, I Once again, that. we opened a creaking door. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. That was a long, long time ago, came buddy. In. When did you become Reagan's appointee? In 1981. Wow. I was in the state legislature here, and um, I had just gotten appointed to the Joint Budget Committee. Okay. Oh, my God, which is like heaven, <laughs> right? Yeah. You got six members, four majority party members, and you write the budget for well, the state of Colorado. that was when the Republican Party was. Well, yeah, and, and, so, and Lamb was the governor yeah. at the time. Oh, yeah. But Joint Budget Committee was so cool. Oh, gosh. You, you got, <laughs> because when you write a budget, people say, well, it's not a you know, policy document. Baloney. <laughs> oh, man. We wrote yeah. poly, plenty of policy into the budget every year, and the four of us could do anything we want, right? Because sure. we had the majority. And I remember that uh, one time the press come and they said, uh, you know, because the, the governor is required to submit a budget to the, to the yeah. legislature, and so he does, and it comes in this big box. And the, the press said to me, um, so. <laughs> Did you re review the governor's budget? And I said, I use the gov governor's budget more than any other member of the committee. And, and they did. said, they said, they said, well, why really? What was it? And I said, well, you see, my son's in ninth grade and he needed a great big binder uh, and I couldn't find one. And then the governor's budget <laughs> budget budget comes you in in a binder, binder. Yeah, yeah, and I said binder. so I emptied it out yes. and I gave it to my grand and I said I, I, to my son and I said I'll tell you I used it more than any other member of the committee I remember that story oh my now, god you are incredible that blew everything up oh yeah well they everything I did it sort of did that you didn't help a lot of times you know my my wife still gives me about no. you saying no. you saying they came over to his house to watch the <laughs> white trash TV. Well, we did. Oh, no, yeah, no, but no. oh, my gosh. Here's geez. one. I, now I can be told. So I've been fired off of Cahow for doing what, grabbing the sheep. I was there. I remember. Well, yeah, and I, that was your fault because <laughs> right? Tan, Tan Credo calls me up and said, I'm going to run for governor. I said, ah, oh, man. Make, he said, I want to make the announcement. It's the other way for. around. He calls me and said, run for governor. I want you to come on my show and announce it. That's what really happened. <laughs> No, no. Anyhow, so Channel 9's there. Yeah, and 7. Because and they think, okay, scoop, and they're coming, and you're coming, and what happened, happened. <laughs> so, but yeah. you but I'm you facing, can't deny when the I'm facing this way to you. <laughs> I do not know what had happened oh, behind me with, with the sheik. You're right. I did. And, and so we do the whole show. And, and we, I walk out, and there's all the TV cameras lined up at, outside oh. the building here. And... I mean there, and, and so uh, the, um, here comes Channel 9 again, and I thought, oh, oh man. And they were laying for me. Cause yeah, yeah, like, but I yeah, thought they were yeah. coming back to talk to me because no, no. I was so good, <laughs> no, you no. know? No, no. And they come back up and they said, did you see what happened? And I said, <laughs> no, what happened? And they said, well, Peter, you decked the sky or whatever. I know, no, but the, and I said, no. I said, well, you were, right, you were right next to me. I didn't see anything, you didn't see And I really didn't well, see anything. 
the show, the, I, the, and I will swear to it in court. <laughs> I, I wish you would have. The deniability factor was the cameras were on when I grabbed them. And you can't say I didn't do that, which I would have never said it anyhow. But I was kicked out the door, sent down the road kicking rocks, as yep. we say. Yep. And actually, I went to a lunch with you. And I just couldn't, I mean, it was like. You were walking up and down the parking lot, oh, oh, my, talking to somebody. It was yeah. Ace King, High Low Jack yeah. in the game. And I'd been on that radio show for like 25 years. And they wanted me out of there for other reasons. Yeah, but yeah, Long yeah. story short, so I get canned. So two days later, I'm with Brian Taylor and Cool River and Kelly Michaels, and we're, we're putting together another show. So Tommy calls me up. And you're running for office. And it was the, was it, what county Republican Group. Was it Arapahoe County or Douglas County or, I because I forget that what that you asked me to go fill in and got. Oh no, that was the re women's club. That was a yeah, Arapahoe County yeah. Uh, women's yeah. Republican club. And so Tom, I said Tom, he's Doty, and Nancy Doty's group. Bingo, there you go. Oh my goodness. And I and first of all, I, Vince Carroll, by the way. That was the that was the, that Vince Carroll was the right was the right news guy. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. God, I'm so glad try my best to remember these names. So they have this big shoot get together and I go, okay, I'll do it because I've been hired. You know, the, the humor is on me now, as the Irish say, and I got a gig. I'm sitting, wins in my sails. And I go in this room and I'm looking around and I'm going, I don't see any minorities. I don't see, you know, and I, go, and I said, your baby's ugly because you're never supposed to go to the newborn and say, gosh, your baby's really ugly. You go and say, oh, your baby's beautiful. So I went, and this is a Jackie Tancredo story who, I mean, there's great marriages that, and that's one of them. Jackie. I had to go to Washington. I couldn't do it. No, and you were going someplace else. No, I had to go to okay. Washington, D.C. And so, and, and we had arranged, she thought I had arranged to be there. And yeah. I said, no, I can't be there. Yeah. I, I'm going to Washington. Oh my God. She says, who, I said, who do you want me to get? She yeah. said, can you get Peter Can Boyles? you get Mike Rosen? <laughs> I said, I don't think I can get Mike, but I can get I Pete, you know. Boyles. He owes me. <laughs> That's all right. I watched him get fired. <laughs> so, so I call Pete and, uh, oh yeah, sure. And, and my, wife, an oh, yeah, my sure. wife, my wife goes yeah. to the thing and, and so then, go ahead. No, yeah. what you said to me was, Jack, you, you'll have dinner with Jackie and Jackie will introduce you. introduce you and take care of you. And I said, well. She has never let me forget that either. What, what, and believe me when I tell you, Jackie Tancredo is one of the finest women I've ever known in my life. <laughs> Certainly deserves the Medal of Honor for all these years she's been married. Yeah. So, Pinhead, now I'm good to go. I'm starting the gig like two days later, you know, and I go into this and I'm looking around and I get up and I'm saying a bunch of people leaning on their wallets and I don't see anybody. I said, this, they're not going to win. I mean, where are they? So then I <laughs> make the fatal, made the fatal error, the flaw, <laughs> and um, people, one person in particular got up and stormed out. And um, yeah, you said you said well. Um, we're talking about the Clintons, right? Well, he says he says okay. <laughs> um, this is you, a shoot. You got a. He says I, I got to tell you, you know, you've got an ugly baby. Yeah. And everybody goes, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> you got an ugly. He says yeah, you got an ugly baby. It's yeah. called the Republican Party. Yeah. <laughs> He's talking about this group of old. Yeah. And and he said um, and you know, all these governors who have cheated on their wives. Yep. And you started out, he said, Yes, I did. But no, what I said was about you and Jackie. And, and that's the payoff. And I said, but if Oh, Tom, he killed she I killed. said, if Tom Tancredo is elected governor, he'll never cheat. And Jackie's sitting right here. I said, because Jackie will shoot him. And and the place went, uh. <laughs> <laughs> and the place went, uh. Yeah. And you said, you said, and uh, the governor, the <laughs> other governor who yes. has cheated on his wife. Yes. Was of course Bill Owens and his sister. Whoa, 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 whoa! And 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 this woman is getting all antsy apparently, and and says, and he says, "What's wrong with you?" Well, what she said was, "That's private business." I said, "Was well, yeah, the but didn't you have to pick business. her out because yeah. something was ha she was yeah. getting?" And he says, "That's not anybody's. That's I don't think those kind of things should be brought up." And, and he said, them, "What about Clinton? What about the Clintons? in the office in the Oval people Office?" Start, people start walking out, <laughs> right? Thinking, and oh. she gets up. Boom, out the door, right? And so who is that? Well, that was Bill Owens' sister, sister yes. right? I didn't, I never met her before either, so I wouldn't have known well, it well, even at know. the time. But, but the place yeah. did, so, I mean, there was sort of a... It was a moment. It was a moment. <laughs> so, 
I, the next day, oh, I'm getting God. crushed. But you're walking out with my wife, and she said, you said, well, do you think I should apologize? And she yeah. says, well, it's all right. It's true, right? It's true. Yeah. So, what what hell no. <laughs> Truth is a great defense. Yeah, but I yeah. That. Oh, God. Uh, that, and that, I mean, that, that's minor league stuff, to stuff that we, oh, yeah, we but, pulled off and did together. Yeah. But... Um, you we haven't all, got yeah. enough time on 10 yeah. of these shoots for, well, yeah, but to go like, through all of those. It was like, and, and Tom Tancredo has the heart of a lion, and it's all true. And, yeah, I never saw you, you know, back away and never mm. say, put your gun down and walk away. <laughs> and we're always doing, I mean, I say, well, who should do this? Somebody say, what about Tancredo? <laughs> That's right. I mean, because <laughs> that was always, I always thought to myself, you know, does it really mean you have guts or is it? Stupid. Uh, stupid. Yeah, yeah no, that's right. Probably both. There's an inverse relationship there, guts and stupidity. And now, <coughs> here we are, you know, as we do the first shoot, here we are, and the state is so different than when you came in. Oh, my and, God. I mean, I, is that I, the truth? You know, the, this, the state of Colorado, the Republican Party has less elected power at any time since World War II, since 1945. This Republican Party has less in Colorado. In Colorado, yeah, yeah. And well, and that, going back for just a minute to that, to that, what you're talking about when I went to work for Reagan, and that was in the state legislature. It was just the glory days in a way. But but even then, the, Peter, plenty of arguments. Remember, we were the House yeah. crazies. Oh yeah. And this was the group of like eight of us, yeah. <laughs> who fought the establishment, yeah. uh, tried to oust Straley, Ron Straley, who was the speaker when yeah. we first came in, eventually got him on the second go-round. All that internal conflict was over a liberal conservative mm -hmm. aspect of, of the party. And so it, it goes back a long way, for sure. And, um, and, and so I just, got oh, I just got appointed to the JBC the year before. It was so wonderful. I'm having a, and I get this call. 1980, I was a Reagan delegate in, mm -hmm. to, to, uh, in Detroit. <clears throat> um, then I was a Reagan surrogate speaker here. For him. So I get this call, and the, and the guy, go, after he gets elected, the guy goes, um, your name has been given to us as someone who might want to serve in the administration. And I said, the, like, are you talking about the Reagan yeah, administration? Yeah. yeah. I did said, you think it was a put on? Or did you think it was legit? Well, at first I did, yeah. because, what the, who am I? I mean, you know, come on. And he goes, you know, I really. And I said, well, yeah, what? Who do I have to kill? I Name him. I'll do it <laughs> tomorrow. <clears throat> and he said, uh, I don't have to kill anybody. But I said, well, in what capacity? He goes, well, uh, you've been a teacher yeah. and you're chairman of the education committee yeah. in Colorado. Well, how about the Department of Education? And I said, oh, my God. I said, please, please do not take this the wrong way because I am immensely flattered by this. But no. And he goes, why not? I said, because I don't believe we should have a U.S. Department of Education. Yeah, yeah. He goes, that's why we're calling you. <laughs> so I said, oh, well, okay. Well, things went on. I could talk, talk, talk. I don't want to go to Washington. I can't leave my job. My wife is a teacher. She won't go. And, uh, well, don't worry. We're going to make these, th these regional offices political appointments. I said, there's a regional office of the Department <laughs> of Education? Now you tell me. Yeah. I haven't heard of it. Yeah. Oh, he says, well, we send out checks every two weeks. Somebody gets them. They're there, you know. And so I said, well, okay. Went to look. Sure as hell. 19th and Stout office building on the three floors of the Department of Education. I thought, well, I can't believe it. 222 people. I always get mixed. I always be careful because I, sometimes I, I, I say they were working there. Some of them were working, <laughs> not many. Uh, and, and so um, I go up and I start th looking around, going person to person. I say, what do you do here? What's your job? And I'm the new, your new yeah. boss, you know. What, what do you do? Um, GS-12. That's a government service. Oh, it's a great gig. Really? That's uh, a great job. I, yeah. I said, what is that? What do you, I said, I, what do you do here? Yeah. He said, well, I'm an ed tech, education technician. I said, do it this way. You walk in the door, you turn on that light, you sit down. What happens? Because <laughs> I cannot tell for a moment what a GS-12 ed tech does around here. 222 of you. And there were various divisions, uh, civil rights and all this. Anyway, the more I talk, the more it becomes apparent. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. They're cutting out newspaper articles because yeah. Califano, who had just created the department, and um, with... Uh, because it was a political payoff to the NEA, to the National Education Association. Education shouldn't even be in their title. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a payoff to them. And so um, but for Carter, Carter said, you know, if you support me, I'll create a department. They said, okay. And he did. Had nothing to do with education, believe me. Not one thing. Bureaucrats. 
<laughs> so it was all political. They created it, and we could not one year later get even a Republican to carry a bill to abolish it. It had only been in existence a year and a half. So, so anyway, we're going to implode. That was the deal. I was going to come in. We're going to make we're going to smash this sucker down, right? And because uh, that's the only way we can really handle this. And I said, okay, sure. That I'll, all right, buddy. And so I'd go to these people. What do you do? What do you do? No, Dottie, this lady. What do you What do you do here, Dottie? She says, Well, I'm the regional office librarian. And I said, No kidding. Where's, Where's the, the library? Where's the library? <laughs> she, was, just, yeah. she says, Oh, you were, it was yeah. walk down here hall here. You passed it. I said, What do you mean I passed it? I didn't see it. Oh yeah. I said, well, Come on, because you had her own office, mm -hmm. right? She was making about about thirty five a year. This is 1980, then, right? man. That's big dough. That's big yeah. dough. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we go and we're walking and she grabs my arm. So here we are. Where? There's a there's a magazine rack along the wall, a three three tier magazine rack. She goes, this is it. I said, this is the library. Yeah, I have to make, change all the mayor periodicals here that come. I mean, so I'm thinking, ah, there goes another one. You know, this this is great. <laughs> and and uh, another guy less. Oh gosh. I said, what do you do here? So I'm a I'm a head of the uh, federal real property division. And I said, whoa, what is that? Oh, it's very big. That's a big. He said, uh, we, we take, when, when the federal government accesses real property, we take it, find an education entity that might want it, and we try to go through the process. Three years they can look, have it. I have to keep reviewing it. Eventually we give it to them if, if it all works. I said, oh, that's a very interesting. I said, how many years have we been here? Five years. I said, how many pieces of property have you uh, transferred in this five years? He goes, well, there are quite a few in the pipeline. <laughs> and I said, in other words, none. Yeah, none. Yeah, sure. So I said, no. uh, well, how many of you reviewed? He said, oh, I've never had any travel money. I said, so you, you've been here five years. Sitting. Sitting there. Yeah. What it was, turns out, totally illiterate. He couldn't read or write. Could not. I mean, he'd, he'd send me reports. I, I started demanding reports. I'd start to look at them. It was like E.E. E. Cummings, you know. Oh, sure, of course. <laughs> you know, yeah, except it stream, wasn't E.E. E. Cummings. Stream of conscious. Stream of conscious, yeah, yeah. right. And so I thought, there's another one. Bingo, we can get rid of it. And, and you, can, you start down this road and you realize just because they have no job, I didn't realize it, but I was told just because you have no job to do in the federal government is not a reason you can get rid of anybody. Of course not. No, because your job as the supervisor is to find something sure. for them to do. Make can work. you imagine? Can you oh, yeah. And so, and so the only way you could do it was you had to get your budget cut. So I'd go back to Washington every year, right? And go through, and they, the, the guy, they see me and go, get the net, you know, here, here comes that guy. Well, I remember when you did all yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it took me, took me four years. We got it from 222 down to about 60, mm -hmm. something, 62. And I always gave a speech, and I said, our department has gone down 80% since I came in here. Can anybody tell the difference? And, 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 and of course, can. nobody ever, ever said, oh, yeah, that... Stuff we get from the regional office has just gone to hell. No, nobody even knows. And I said, if it went to zero, it would never, ever know. We were talking, of course, this is why I love him so much, not only that, but who he truly is, a former congressman, longtime friend. He is the man, Tom Tancredo. But the same thing is true. We were talking about these now emerging systems in the uh, in a city of, you know, the people experiencing homelessness. Well, it's about the bureaucrats that are developed. How many people do you think have been developed in the city of Denver or the, or the state of Colorado, but in the city of Denver, to be bureaucrats to handle the bureaucracy of taking care of the, un, the unhoused? Well, yeah. I would bet 300 jobs, maybe more. Oh, yeah. I don't know the number. They won't, you know. But and how much are those people paid? And 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 there was a term once called poverty pimps. Uh, Bob 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 Cote. Bob Cote. Co called, God bless him. Called them poverty pimps, or they and they watch the stuff. And I remember you going through that and going. This guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. And you, if I remember correctly, you couldn't find anybody who really did much. No, you couldn't, really. There were a few who had, and, and I remember, oh gosh, I remember the, the inspector general for the whole department here in, in this region. Nice guy. He'd come in and talk quite a bit. He was a 15. He was a GS-15, man. That's the highest yeah. you can get. And so, and he, you could tell he was just, you know, depressed all the time. And, and, and I said... I told him, I said, what, what's really bugging oh. you? And he said, oh, man. He says, I come in every day, I just, there's nothing. You know, I, I, I have no, no real job. I, I mean, he admits it right in front of me. And I, him, I couldn't deal with because he was the head of the department, but of the, I mean, uh, yeah, the IG. And so I said, uh, he goes, you know what this is here? He said, this is, I, I am, 
I have golden handcuffs. He says, I can't go anywhere because I can't possibly make the money I make here, out there, and yet I hate everything I do here because I don't do anything significant. His, his biggest thing, um, one of the, one of, uh, the secretaries, <coughs> I was there for five secretaries, which was amazing in a way. Oh, that was another one. I was going to get fired oh, all the time. Um, and uh, you know, Pat Schroeder, remember, she oh, used to write letters battles. against me. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And, and so, um, but he, he had to, he, he, what, which, which, oh, gosh, uh, which secretary? Toward the end, the guy ran for president, too, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Not Lamar Alexander. No, no, okay. no, no, no. And he had a radio show and a TV show and all this. And, stuff. and here in Denver? No, 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 no. This is like national. Yeah. Um, uh, a- anyway, he comes into town and he had to go because he liked to do the 14ers. I used to have to make some deal that he's going to go and, and speak to, whatever. Right. And so he, uh, could, go so he could come and do, uh, climb the 14ers. And, and my IG had to do sort of security for him and go with him. That was it. That was about everything he did. Golden handcuffs. I'll never forget that because it just talked about so many who were exactly like that. And in a way, we did it to him. There were a couple of people there who I, I thought, you know, you were pretty, I read some of your stuff. You, you were pretty good, you know. Mm-hmm. And the, this one guy said to me, you know, if you get rid of me, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to kill myself. And I said, uh, listen, buddy, I said, hey. I, 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 I have seen what you could do. You were an eagle. You are now a penguin because you have never, you have, for all these years, your talents have atrophied. But you've still got them. If you work them, you can get back. And, and you know, uh, but there were a lot like he that. He threatened to kill himself. He did, he did. Yep, he did. Put, put, that, on, put that one on you. Oh, man, no so, kidding. You know, said and done, um, first of all, this is absolutely wonderful. It's exactly what I was hoping for. Um, so all these years and all these experiences, what's the lesson? What have you learned? Oh, gosh. Well, I'll tell you. Um, I've learned. <laughs> no. Peter, I have We've looked at my life. Long time. I have looked yeah. at my life now. Uh, it's another look back on your yeah, life sure. thing. And I am absolutely convinced that there is a sort of a plan for us. And I know you're not a religious yeah. guy, but I, I, I will tell you. I don't know how much time we have We're in good. this. In this. We're good. Okay. Uh, something happened when I was, um, years before I went to Congress, but certainly affected what I did in Congress. And it became, for me, probably the most important thing I ever did and that seldom anybody ever heard of. Okay. But the lead up to it is a little bit of a story, but what your question prompts this answer. Um, I certainly, uh, I grew up a Catholic. Uh, My wife grew up a Mormon. Uh, Neither of us were religious at all when we got married or even before when we lived together. And so um, we were not religious people. We didn't raise our kids in any way, and that was it. But at a certain point, uh, we'd been married about, I'd guess, 20 years maybe, and I said to her, you know, I've, I've got a hole in my soul. And she said, well, what do you mean? I said, I don't know how to explain it. It's just that something isn't, I, I, something's missing. I have a hole in my soul. And she said, um, what do you want to do about it? And I said, well, go to church. And she says, and I was telling your wife this after 20, you know, that she, you never, and she was like, what? I said, yeah, I don't know, something, better try. <clears throat> so she goes, okay, uh, two criteria. One, can't be Mormon. I tried that, didn't like. And two, I don't want to know anybody there and I want them to know me. <laughs> so I said, okay. So I go and I, 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 I see a friend of mine, Huey Fowler. Sure. You know Huey? Oh, yeah, sure. I served yeah. with him. Great, great yeah. guy. He's yeah. still he's 90-some years old oh, and yeah. sharp as a tag. Yeah. Anyway, I knew he was a very religious guy. And I went to him and I said, Hugh, I told him this problem. And he said, well, I heard about this guy. I said, do you have anywhere we, we could go? And he goes, I heard about this guy, Jim Dixon. And, and he is a pastor, and he's a pastor at this church out here. On, uh, and, I, and it gave me, and it was on um, Colorado Boulevard and University. I mean, Handon and, and uh, Colorado Boulevard. And, well, we lived in Arvada. So 
nobody's going to know, <laughs> know us there, right? Nobody's going to know Jay. So I come home to Jay. He said, okay. He didn't know for sure about this guy or even what the religion. He just heard about him that he was really good. We go. I walk in the door. Now, this is years before I go to Congress, okay? Probably, oh my goodness, four or five, maybe more. And, and we're sitting there, and I'm thinking, how did this guy know I was going to be here today? <laughs> you know, He's talking to Tom Tancredo, man. And, and I mean, tears. I, I, I'm not kidding you. It was really quite an experience. That was our church. We, going, from then on, we're going there, right? We go and go and go. Um, the one, one day, we do this thing. It's called Pray for the Persecuted Church Around the World. And the focus was on Sudan. Okay, so here we go. I see this, and for some reason, I said to Jackie, God, I don't know what the heck, but we're sp supposed to do something about that. You know, because what had happened was the, the Arab North, mm -hmm. right, a uh, civil war. Terrible civil war. Se civil war no. against the black Christian yes. South. Arab Muslim, black Christian. They come down, they raid, the, raid these villages, uh, 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 you know, burn them and... Oh. and uh, and take them back as slaves and all this stuff. And I'm looking at this, and it's just getting inside of me. I don't know why. Okay, we leave. I said to Jackie, I've got to do something. What do you want to do? I said, I don't know. I know anyway, we gave a little money, but this went on then for, for years, but it stuck there. It stuck there, buddy, that something was supposed to be done about this. Okay. Um, all of a sudden, we move from, oh, the church moves to Highlands Ranch. Now we got to go from Arvada to Highlands Ranch. Two fires. Come on. What do we do? Find a new church? Sell the house. Our kids were gone. They were in college. We sold the house. Yeah. We move. We didn't like Highlands Ranch. We moved Middle, Littleton. Built a house. It's all relevant to a story I'm gonna, that I'm telling you here. I tell you, it, 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 honest to God, is relevant. So um, now we're halfway there, and we keep going. And all of a sudden... One day, uh, 1998, um, uh, Schaefer uh, decides to quit. And he'd been in Congress for eight years, nice young guy, family, beautiful family, kids, everything. Quits to drink. Yeah, I know. To drink I was... and drank himself to death. Yes, I know. Yeah? Okay, he quits Congress. Everybody goes, what? Danny Schaefer yeah. quit? Yeah. I'm in the district. I said, what the hell? You know, I, I run. I throw my hat in the ring. I was, I was running the Independence Institute. I throw my hat in the ring. I'm a nobody from Nantucket. Nobody even heard of me for a long time. I'd been in the legislature, you know, regional director, but who, that doesn't mean. So we get into a primary, five-way five -way primary. I remember the whole of this. Yeah. I win yeah. with 26% of the vote. I remember. Right? Yeah. I win the primary. I, I lost both counties. There were two counties in my district at the time, Arapahoe and Jefferson. Lost them both, but to two separate people. So, therefore, I actually ended up with more votes. <laughs> Coming in second in each one, I ended up with more votes than either, and I, I become the nominee. I then, I run, I go to Congress, I, I can't believe it. Um, and, and, and the first thing you do when you're in Congress is you've got to pick out a committee. I remember when you did, and you right? went. And I said, I said, well, I want international relations. Mm -hmm. And now, now, Peter, there are A, B, C, D committees. A being you can raise a hell of a lot of money on this one, business, finance, you know, uh, for your campaigns. That's it by not an IR. F committee. Not IR, <laughs> not, no, not international IR. relations. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I said, so, okay, you got it. Oh, baby, yeah, you're just the guy we're looking for, right? Uh, you know, sure, you can have it. Nobody wants. So I get on. Then I, what committee do you want as a, as a uh, subcommittee? I said, Africa. The kid, the, the staffer comes to me and he goes, Congressman, <clears throat> you don't have to take that because nobody wants that committee. Yeah. Nobody's on that committee. You, just because you're a freshman, he said. And I said, no, buddy. Take my word for it. There's a reason. I didn't know what the reason was, but I mean, I knew it had to do with the Sudan, but I didn't know how I was ever going to work that out. Compelled. It's, right. Yeah. Okay. So, sure, I go in the committee. I start talking. Blah blah blah. The Sudan, 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 Sudan. My office gets a call from Senator uh, Brownback, in Kansas, and and uh, his staffer says to my staffer, "Understand, your guy is interested in the Sudan. 
said, oh, yeah, he talks about it a lot. He said, well, my, my boss is too, and, and he's going to go in April. You wanna, does Tancredo want to go with him? I said, they come to me, and I said, well, Sudan, go to the Sudan? Yeah. Uh, isn't there a big... And, 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 and you know, the State Department's going, we will give you no support. You are not to go, because they hate it when a congressman goes into their bailiwick, right? Messes things up. Um, and uh, I said, okay. And, and, and I mean, they send tel telegraphs to my house, cables, and my wife reads them, and they go, wait, this, uh, everybody's getting killed. Oh, it's yeah. 200,000 displaced, millions are dying. Oh my gosh, he says, you can't go, you can't go, you can't get in. They won't give you a visa. You're going to sneak into the country, right? So I said, okay, I'll go. <laughs> And so I, I'm go first leg of the trip. You end up in in, in Germany and in, uh, in, in waiting for the plane to Nairobi, uh, and then figuring out how you're going to get into Sudan. I'm waiting there, and here comes a guy. Stands in front of me. Says, "Are you Tom Tancredo?" I said, "Yes, sir." He says, "Well, I'm Senator Brownback. I had never met him, never even talked to him, and and I mean, it was all staff to staff, and." And so I said, oh, God, Senator, I'm so glad because I, I don't even know what the hell I'm doing here. I'm a freshman, but there's something. And I, so I go through the story, right? He's listening, and he goes to me. Mm, it's all right, Tom. Same thing happened to me. Wow. <laughs> wow. All the hair stands in the back. I mean, it wasn't the same exact events, but led to it, led to it, right? So, so. I said, okay, we go, we get to Nairobi. We have to, we have to uh, uh, rent, I mean, at least a, a, a pilot in a plane, and it was right straight out of uh, Indiana Jones, okay. honest to God, the guy, hat, his, you know, scarf, and, and, and we have to fly in at 500 feet because you have to be under radar. He lets me come sit with him. I'm sitting in the front. I look down, I said, my God, look at, there's a crashed plane there, it's looking still small. He goes, oh yeah, they shot that down last week. <laughs> oh my God. So we, we, we're, now we're looking for Father Dan. Father Dan is a defrocked Catholic priest who is the Livingston of the Sudan. Dr. Livingston. Yes, yeah. and we're looking for him because he's going to take us to the rebel leader, who is John Garang. Oh my gosh, thank God. Thank you, Lord, for letting me remember that. So, John Garang, that's who we really got to find, but we, it's hard, and, and we know we got to find Father Dan. He's created uh, all these camps for all the people that have been, all the uh, black uh, Africans that have been forced out uh, from the north. And we, we, we land at a place near Yay, Y E I. You know, we get off the plane, he keeps one engine going, and he goes, 10 o'clock Thursday or whatever the hell, I'll be here. 10.01, I won't. You know, so we get off the plane, I tell Brownback, eh, maybe we should just stay here. <laughs> Let's camp here. Hey. You know, and we have one other member, Don Payne, black congressman from New Jersey. Oh, ultra liberal. We fought a became greatest friends ever. Every time I got in trouble in Congress, he'd walk down to the mic and he'd go, this man's first trip as a congressman was to the city. Oh, yeah. and, 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 so, um, <laughs> and so, and one other guy, the agricultural attache. Now the agricultural, you have to understand, Pete, agricultural attache is just Another word for CIA. Sure. And oh, everybody course. knows, everybody where yeah, you go, course, no matter yeah. what. Well, KGB did the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, there was yeah. a, who's that? That's your agricultural. Oh, oh, CIA. Yeah, right. 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 Yeah, yeah. A nice guy, young guy, yeah. smart as hell. Yeah. He's there, the four of us, right? And we go look for, for Father Dan. But the first place we get to is Y E I. -E and as we're going in, you can hear, boom, boom, boom. They're mortaring this place. And, and there's, we get there, fire is still, uh, everybody's running. We get to a, a, a and, 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 but there's some, there's a couple, two or three goats, I remember. And I kept thinking, I wonder why, how these goats have been, stay because they, they're eating the bark off of the trees. People are starving to death, right? But they've got these three goats they haven't killed and eaten. Why? Well, I asked my agricultural attache, the goats, now, the Russians provided the north with these Antonov, but they're not bombers. No. They're they're cargo planes, mm -hmm. and the the you know the back drops down. Well, they they gave the North these things, and the North would use them to bomb. But just terror tactics. They just shove mm -hmm. the ordnance off. No strat, no strategic. Mm -hmm. uh, but when the Antonov was coming, the goats mm -hmm. would run. Yeah. And 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 because they could hear them far far yeah. before 
long before uh, people. And when the goats would run, the people knew. I mean, that was their early warning system. So they, oh my God, all these, so all, we're going through all these little kids, tiny and Sudanese people. There is no black that I can, like maybe, it's in, they're, they're just shiny, shiny black, you know? And, and their faces, all these little kids, big eyes, and, and they're all around me, and they're hugging and pulling, and, and, and I say to the, I said, and they're yelling stuff at me, and I'm kind of holding them, and I say to our agricultural, <laughs> what are they saying? He says, he listens, he goes, well, they know you're from someplace important, they think, the United, they don't know for sure, but they think if they get close enough to you, nobody's going to bomb them, right? Tommy. And I said, oh, story. man, do I wish that was true. And, I, and you want to pick them all up. And you know, you you've never told me the story yeah. before. Well, it goes on. Right. And that's why I'm telling you it was long. I'm sorry. But no, it, it is all part of the, the answer to your question. And so we, we, are, we are trying to get out of this. We, we trek, trek, trek. Finally, we find Father Dan. Okay. So he's a, in a, it's like two or 3,000 people in his, in his refugee camp. And he, they had all, everybody there had lost somebody on the trek to the camp, right? He had, he had to parachute into where he found them and tell them, I can't serve you here because it's on this mountainside and I can't get, and they said, he said, I, we're staying here. If you had a hard time finding us, they will too, right? So, so he creates this camp and we go in and I've got, I've got a, a thing of scotch about this big, a plastic thing of scotch because they tell us before you go in, don't eat anything. Don't drink anything. Well, well, what could I do? I mean, you know, you only really have so many options. So I, I chose scotch. <laughs> so, and so, and 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 peanut butter crackers. You know those yeah. in those yeah. packages. Yeah. I had Jackie pack. So we had a bunch of them. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> we're at a, around, sitting around that camp that night at the fire, and he, I pull up, and he goes, "Is that is that scotch?" Yeah. And I said, "Yes, sir. It is. I brought some." Well, I never saw it again. <laughs> <laughs> Father Dan, he had married, I, I forgot to tell you, I, I told you he was defrocked because he had married um, a um, tribeswoman and they had a couple of kids. Okay, great guy. Anyway, he takes us, we finally find John Garang. We work with through this whole thing. I get back. I write the Sudan Peace Act. It took me two years. Oh, I, I passed it. It eventually led to the, the end of, of, of hostilities and eventually to the, to the division of the two countries. Now, I'm not going to tell you things are perfect there, but I'm going to tell you it isn't anything like what it was. Peter, that was the most important thing I ever did in my congressional career and probably in my life. It is little known. I mean, I, I understand everything is immigration, immigration, immigration. That's everything, right? No, this was it. Now, I tell you this whole thing because Peter... Every, if you go back step by step by step, starting with a hole in my soul, to, the, to my buddy who tells me about this guy, we go to the guy, it, it works out. Uh, he, he does the thing about Sudan. We move from Arvada to uh, Littleton. The, Dan Schaefer quits. I'm in the right district. Had I stayed in Arvada, wrong district. Had I gone to Highlands Ranch, following the chair, wrong district, could not have run. I am now in the 6th Congressional District. I won, I run. 26% of the vote, I win the primary. I, I win, I go to, but all this, all this, I'm telling you, is because I believe my life is like that. And I believe everybody's is. We were in, in Jerusalem once, Jackie and I, and we were waiting at a, at a, in, in, the, uh, Ces, uh, in Cesarea at this great big uh, amphitheater for an event. And it was hot and nobody wanted to stay. So we walk around, walk around with everybody. We're walking through a dig, an archaeological dig. And, and my God, you wouldn't know it because there's no fencing, there's no tape, nothing. And we're, all of a sudden you see this thing on the ground and it's a, they're, they're, they're unearthing a Roman bath. And in the floor is a woman's face they're trying to put together with, you know, little, little pieces mosaic. of mosaic. Yeah. And, and I look at it and I said to her, I picked up a little, you know, people go, hey, Mabel, put that in your purse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I said, I, mean, I did not take it, but I picked up this little piece of a tile that was, that was just all around. I said, Jackie, is this not like every day in our life in that? Over there, it means nothing. If you kick it, step on it, it's of no consequence. 
a day in your life. You get up, you go to work, you come home, you get the dog, you know, eat your dinner, go to... Nothing, it was just a day. But only when you can put that, when you see what that little piece of tile does when you put it in the picture, only then can you realize what is being created for you by God. I believe if you let, if you, if you let it happen, and if you believe in him, he's creating a beautiful picture. You won't know it till you can actually get away and kind of look back at your life as we are doing right now. Uh, to McAllen and Cenogenics for underwriting this, I don't think we'll be able to top the show. I, uh, I'm sitting here as we're getting ready to end it, and I'm thinking, we're going to play hell getting a better show than this. Um, I love you with my heart, always have. Hey, buddy. There's nobody better than it's you. A, it's a mutual, I feelings think, mutual. You, know, you had told me as we line up to this, you said, I'm going to tell a story about Sudan that I've never told before. And I was like, okay, coming into this. And um, we've been pals for 40 years, and I've never heard you tell that story. Yeah. So, well, um, it, it, I guess it's just never, you know. But it, it just, I keep thinking about it. I think about it all the time, simply uh, in, in relation to what we're saying about how your life is developed. What are the things that happen to you? Is it all just by happenstance? Is it all just coincidence? Mathematics of the whatever it I is. I don't know, buddy, but in my life, it certainly seemed like it was all a planned thing. Um, I need to tell you this. When we started this morning, it's like, I don't know, 920, 925. I ended on it. On this note, you're making me so choke on my here. coffee. <laughs> Mark Crowley is really behind all of this, and, and I'm going. Have you seen Tancredo? And everybody said no, no, no. So, you know, my we talk minimum or text minimum once or twice a week. So I call his number. I'm in the studio, and he goes, "Hello." I'm going. Oh, sh <laughs> he didn't remember the show, and I'm going. And you, you're playing this up on me like you're. <laughs> Uh, Jackie, uh, I'm going. I'm going to kill him when I find him. Because what are you, where are you? You're supposed to be here. Where are you? I said, well, I'm in bed. bed. What do you mean? Uh, I'm in <laughs> and and I said, and I went, son of a. And I'm coming down this hallway, and I look, and he's standing looking in the window. <laughs> he says, well, how far away are you? I said, about <laughs> one second, I guess. That story will hang with us. That story was great. Oh, good. This is called the shoot, everybody, from pro wrestling. There are works and shoots. That was a shoot. And tell your friends about this one. It's going to be hard to top it. Thank you very much for watching this. And there's no one better. Tom Tancredo. Mm -hmm. See you next time on The Shoot.